system. Um, David has presented professionally on a variety of topics ranging from new apps and emerging technology to podcasting. He is also a member of the Cephalon Virtual Conference Committee of which he has pre previously chaired. Furthermore, David is also a board member of the Federal Correctional Institution Miami Community Relations Board, which I find, find really interesting and um, have really um, found some pretty um, cool information that I'd like to talk to you about it um, further later, David. Um, thank you so much for being willing to attend, um, present for us today. I'm going to go ahead and make you the presenter, um, David, and let me know if you have any problems. So, All right. So you can yeah. see my presentation? Very good. Okay. So welcome everybody. This is going to be about podcasts. Um, I wanted to first go over some of the objectives that we're going to go over today. I'm not sure how many of you have listened to podcasts, know about podcasts, want to know about podcasts. Um, you'll, we'll go over some popular ones and a few librarian themed ones just so we can uh, know that we're, we're still here and that you can do it too. Uh, we'll explore some of the reasons why you should listen to podcasts and why you should create your own and how to create a successful podcast. So first off, I wanted to do a poll of wanting to know how many people have listened to a podcast in the past week. And I can't really see any of these results if anybody chimes in. I don't see anybody answering. Let's see. Okay. Let me see. Nobody's in. So go ahead and in the chat, if you have listened to a, a podcast in the pa past week, let us know. No. Uh, Willany has. Christina has. Um, I definitely have. I listen to them very often. So that's about um, two yeses and a okay. no. Three okay. yeses. Okay. So what podcast, the ones that did say yes, what podcast have you listened to? I've listened to um, Yalsa's, a Yalsa one and a um, one on digital um, design thinking for libraries. Okay. A comedy bang bang, a comedy okay. I don't know That's what that a good one. is. That's a Will funny one. Podcast for Dungeons and Dragons, non work related. Okay. God, I don't think this is racist. Nah, we're all here to learn. There's podcasts on every topic and subject imaginable. I have my own personal podcast that I do with some, some buddies of mine that I created. It's called um, Beer Bros and BS, and it's about craft beer. And we shoot the breeze while drinking the beer. We review it. We record at local breweries, at craft beer bars, and talk a little bit about that later, about how you can build your own podcast at your library and you can what, what that can do for you. So first, what is a podcast? Well, you can read that there. It's your basic dictionary uh, explanation. But essentially... It's a show that's distributed through an RSS feed. Um, they may be educational, entertaining, anything like that. Um, you can listen to them online, um, live. You can download them, listen to them on, on demand as, as you want. And they can be pushed to an app, so you don't even have to worry about it. So an RSS feed, for those who don't know, is a rich site summary. Sometimes it's referred to as really simple syndication. It's a format um, of delivering regularly changing web content. You can download an app, uh, a commercial reader, an extension to your browser, and you can get the link of an RSS, an RSS feed link and put it in there. And whenever you want to read the news, you just open that up and, and whatever links you put in there, that news will go right there. and You can read it 
right there. The same thing with podcasts. Or you you submit your your podcast to a a, a, a you create a link a, a feed link for it, and that just wherever somebody listens to your podcast, because you have many avenues and variety of apps and websites that you can listen to a podcast. Um, there are some examples of popular podcasts out there. Pod Save America is one of the most popular shows right now. Uh, it's a politically themed show. Uh, it was created by former White House staffers in the Obama administration. So as you can imagine in this climate, um, definitely people are going to be talking about what's going on, what happened, what could happen. There's the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, it's another popular show, it's a long form in-depth conversation with us, uh, guests from the comedy world. They talk about sports, they talk about science, everything in between. Um, for those of you who don't know Joe Rogan, he's a comedian. He was the host of the TV show Fear Factor. He's a, a commentator on, on UFC. He does a lot of things in between. Um, it's just like a hodgepodge of topics that come up and you never know who's going to show up or, or what's going to go on. Another popular one is W2, WTF with Mark Marin. Um, same kind of thing he records now in his, in a garage, essentially a studio garage. And there are all types of celebrities. Um, he's an actor and a comedian, a uh, writer. He does all types of uh, guests that come on. Barack Obama has been on his show. Um, this is the one that kind of got me into podcasts. Uh, the Smodcast Network, created by um, Kevin Smith and Scott Mosier. Kevin Smith, uh, the Silent Bob, all the movies that he's made. And he talks and, and talks and talks. And this, this show... It, is what influenced me to get into podcasting because essentially he just sits down with a friend with somebody that he admired, somebody he wants to know more about, and he just interviews them. And, the, and it's just a conversation that turns into something else. And it can turn into a mo for him, for instance, he, with his uh, co-creator, started talking about, oh, it would be funny in Canada if you would see a, a, um, a wall, like a walrus kind of a monster. How would they, how would the, you know, with being so polite, how would they deal with, you know, stopping a monster? And its story just kept evolving on the, on the shows until essentially they said, yeah, hey, let's make this into a movie. And a movie was made out of that and a spinoff even. Now we do have pop culture podcasts like that, but we also have library themed podcasts. So we have the New York Public Library. They actually have, they run two podcasts. One is the New York Public Library podcast that features uh, favorite writers, artists, thinkers, smart talks and uh, provocative conversations. Um, they record weekly. They also have uh, another podca podcast called The Librarian Is In. They do a weekly discussion about books, culture and what to read next. So you have your choice there, which you can go to their um, site. And from there, they link to where you can find their podcast. American Libraries Magazine has a podcast called The Dewey Decibel. Um, theirs is only a monthly podcast that uh, features conversations with librarians, authors, thinkers, scholars, other experts on topics from the library world and beyond interesting read and I just love the title of that show. The Free Library of Philadelphia records their author events that they have there and they make it available to the public so you can listen directly on this website which is really uh, really cool and they have tons and tons of author events there. The Library of Congress has more podcasts than I've seen by other organizations like like uh, Kevin Smith's uh, Smodcast, which has several podcasts linked to his network. But this one, just on the uh, you know the screenshot, you can see four different shows, and each show has you know individual podcasts in them, 
and you, I mean, there's just so much. There's such a obviously such a big, a big uh, uh, library. They can support tons and tons of, of podcasts. So if you can learn, you can listen to. And also, there's even even like Book Riot, book blogs have their own library um, podcast. Get your reader advisory information from there. What's coming out? What's what's that book about? You know, these are all examples of podcasts, but really, why should you listen to more podcasts? Why should you get started? So according to the Huffington Post, you can get inspired. There is just a quick search uh, on, on Google will find um, there's a podcast on there are a few podcasts on better on self betterment called on being strangers, Ted radio hour by NPR, Benjamin Walker's theory of everything, bulletproof radio stuff to blow your mind. You know, these are podcasts made to inspire you, to get you to better yourself. Um, there are podcasts just to get you learning and get more educated. Um, one that I'm gonna, going to start listening to is um, by Duolingo. It's an app and a website that teaches link teaches you a new language. It's kind of like... Um, Mango languages. I prefer dual lingo. I swear it worked for me learning German going to Oktoberfest. Just worked great. Um, professional growth. You can learn new tips and uh, uh, practices, areas of interest, hobbies. You can glean things from other libraries and possibly start a similarly themed program at yours. Um, you can use a listen to a podcast to escape and a study done by Emma Rodero at Pompeo Fabra University. They found that listeners of podcasts generate more vivid images in their minds and have higher levels of emotional development in their story. Another study uh, proves that podcasts stimulate mental imagery more intensely and it causes listeners to have uh, to pay more attention. Since listeners of podcasts are only listening to a story and not seeing it, it causes them to have to use their imagination and build pictures of who and what they're listening to in their head. Therefore, their imaginations are more strong and vivid than those who don't listen to podcasts. And to optimize your time, you can listen because you can download a podcast to an app to your computer. You you know you can listen to it while you're driving, commuting, working out whenever you want to, while you're working on a book order, anything you want, you anytime you want to listen to it, you can listen to it at your ease. So how would you, how do you listen to podcasts? You know, I told you, you could download one of the aggregators or, but you have really the, the easiest way is to download a specific listening app or to visit a website to stream or download the show. Now, these are going to be a few of, of the apps you can um, use to download podcasts. The most popular one is the Apple Podcast app. If you have a, an iPhone, it's built into your, to your device. Usually, you can delete the app or you can reinstall it. It's free. As a matter of fact, all of these um, apps are free. SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play Music. That one is built in naturally for Android users. Stitcher, Spreaker. And I will say that not every podcast will be on every app. Usually a, a podcast creator would have to go to the app to submit their show to the, to the directory. Um, sometimes it's easier than others. Sometimes you can create one and have it poured out to 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 other shows. Usually, the um, by far the biggest one is the Apple Podcast app. If you can get your show on there, then you can it'll port it out to a bunch of other websites and other iP uh, uh, podcast directories. But there are some that you have to submit specifically to. You can also go to specific websites to listen. Um, or stream podcasts. YouTube is a popular one. SoundCloud, you can also go to their website and stream podcasts. Stitcher is another one. Now we're going to get to um, 
a creator, you can go to the uh, creator's website to, um, you can also go directly to the website. So just like we went to New York Public Library or Library of Congress, you sometimes you can listen to it from their website, but it'll also tell you where you can find their podcast. So for instance, um, a good friend of mine that works at Cephalin, uh, Mr. Josh Stone, we, I was on, I guess I believe I was his first guest on his podcast, Librarians Assemble. It's about librarians and comic books. And you can see there is also, you can listen to it on his, on his website, but it also tells you there, iTunes, Google Play Music, Player FM, or Stitcher. You can get to his show from his website. You can get to it from those apps or other websites. It's your choice, whatever that you already use. You shouldn't need two or three apps to listen to your podcast. Usually you can find one and it should be on there unless you have a very specific niche. This is an example of our a podcast that we did here last year at our South Dade Regional Library at the U Media Center there. It was a Star Wars trivia. It was Star Wars Day. May 4th, and we did a Star Wars trivia contest with uh, myself and another librarian. And we had uh, teens on either side of us, and we did trivia questions. They were extremely hard trivia questions. And the loser had to eat a random jelly bean from a Jelly Belly box that you weren't sure what the flavor was. It was either a good flavor, something like cotton candy, or it could be. Um, fishtail or dirt or earthworm, something along those lines. So you really didn't know. I'm going to play a few seconds of it. Let's see. Let's get around here. So we're trying to get the question here. So you can see there, we took turns going back and forth. After three wrong, after three uh, questions of picking the wrong jelly bean, then you would lose. I'm happy to say my team won. Um, that was actually the one of the easiest questions we had all all episode. But we'll, as we get in, we'll get into it a little bit later, your 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 podcast can be as elaborate setup or as very simple as you as you want it to be. This is pretty elaborate. Every, elaborate. Everybody here has microphones, windscreens, headphones. They have a, you know, somebody's recording going back and forth. So it's, this is a pretty elaborate setup, but yours doesn't have to be this way. So why do a podcast? You know, you might be asking yourself, why am I here? Why do it? Well, according to Inc., it's easy. It really is. It allows you to create long form content. You're supporting your partners and they'll support you. You build personal connections with your audience and it provides a repeat touch point for your audience. So let's see, seems to be stuck here. Looks like I got a problem. You can use the arrows on your computer. It looks like it's uh, frozen. Give me one moment.
Okay, so the show is really easy to, easy to do. It may sound difficult creating RSS feeds, recording it, the equipment, how to put it up. It's really not. There are oodles and tons of videos on YouTube. There are other online guides to help you what you need to record on, on, on how to set it up on that. Um, chances are pretty good that there's probably somebody at your library um, that already knows what to do or that would be interested and has enough know-how on, on how to get it started. Um, what I've seen that everybody is uh, that does it usually has a, a hobby of, 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 of doing it. Um, and you learn as you go. Um, the big thing is it allows uh, you, know, you to create long form con content. Most content that libraries put out is uh, short form. So tweets, little pictures on Instagram, Facebook posts, articles, you know, it usually when you have long, long form content uh, posted, it gets more shares. So this is something that we're trying to do. It helps with um, long form content gets more shares. It's great for uh, SEO or search engine optimization. Um, and it helps position your library, your library brand, your department, whatever you're trying to focus on as an authority in that field. Hey, David, can you tell us the difference between long form content and short form content? So short form um, is, is usually they say, um, well, usually they say between uh, 2000 words and up is long form content. Podcasts also, you know, will fall under that category. Um, short form content is going to be, you know, short little things, tweets, Facebook posts, um, Instagram pictures, articles, something that doesn't take you very long to go through and look at it. You can kind of just scroll through it without really stopping and taking the time to, to go through it. Um, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're also, when you do it, you support your partners. And it's really a good thing because you, you when you invite someone onto your show, it expands the knowledge that you're putting out there. Um, like it also says there, when you invite someone to your show, you're giving them access to your audience and you're, you're helping them increase their their reach. And it, when you do that, in turn, you will they'll support your show. So I got reached, uh, somebody reached out to my personal show yesterday, yesterday evening, wanting to know if I can make it on their radio show tonight. So tonight, uh, when I go home, I'll most likely um, set up my laptop and get ready to, to call into another show. And when I go on their show, they'll, sub, you know, we'll talk about what, I, you know, what we're doing here in Miami, what my, what my podcast is about. And they'll, when they talk about it, my own podcast will grow. And the same thing in, in, in the library when, when, you know, if you have an author event and you'd like to record that, you know, make sure you get permission first. And then you can, once you get that permission, you can record it. You better believe that there's a pretty good chance that they're going to say, hey, check out this. They may tweet it out. Check out the link to this um, author event I did at, 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 what, at, you know, XYZ library. And they say, oh, wow, look at this library is doing. Let's follow that library. Even if they're, you know, if, if you're part of a county library or, or a college library, they say, oh, let's see what else they're doing. And you start to get those extra follows, those extra attention. And in turn, it grows your reach. The other thing is that it builds uh, personal collections with your audience. Um, and to do that, your podcast usually should not be scripted, um, only lightly edited. I would say have a, an outline. Make sure you hit your talking points. If you're doing an interview, make sure you have your questions that you want to ask before. Make sure to have your thank yous before and your introductions written down. But other than that, let the conversation flow. Ask open-ended questions. Get people talking back and forth. When you do this, you're building trust because people are going to listen to you. And you're not going to listen to something that you don't like. So there's a certain bond that forms between the, the show and the audience. And it's, you know, at this point, trust is very important with fake news going out there and 
you know, libraries are a, a, you know, the last bastion of hope for, for, for truth. And as long as we hold that trust, then, you know, that helps with our brand loyalty as we're not fake news. We are putting out truth and that's an absolute must for libraries. The other thing is it provides a repeat touch point for your audience. So, you know, you have a newsletter, I'm sure that goes out to your, your patrons, your customers. Um, you know, when you're putting out a podcast, you're still providing that consistent content that goes right out there to them. You know, you, you want to be able to record regularly. So, you know, you'd see, we, sh we showed you how, you know, the New York Public Library, one of their podcasts is a weekly podcast. Um, American Libraries podcast is a monthly one. As long as you're, as you're regular, regularly putting out your content, for anyone that does, um, that works in social media, you know you're going to get more reactions, more, more feedback when it's put out regularly instead of once every two months, three weeks, then six weeks, then a week after that. When you're all over the place, it's, it's really hard to keep your audience there. Same thing with having a program at your library. If you're not doing it, you know, set on a specific day on a month or having it bi-monthly or weekly, a weekly program, when you're choosing where you want to have it, it's going to be hard to get an audience to come in. So there are four things that you need to create a successful podcast. First thing is hardware. The most common um, hardware that you're going to need is a microphone. This is when it comes up to you. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, depending on if you're going to be using a USB mic, then obviously you're going to need a computer to record it to. You're going to need, you know, eventually you're going to need software to record that and capture that 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 audio that you're bringing in. Um, you can, if you want to use a three and a half millimeter jack, which is the one on the on the lower bottom left screen, you can plug that directly into most computers. Still, you can um, plug that into a digital recorder that you can buy at Best Buy anywhere for about twenty bucks. And personally, that's what I use. Or you can use a, a quarter inch jack which if you use, you're using that, you may have a microphone that has that, maybe it has an adapter or that goes onto a three and a half millimeter jack, but you will use realistically a mixer. So you're having more than one microphone going into a mixer that puts them all together. And that goes out to either a computer, it can go out to a digital recorder, however you wanna do it. However you wanna capture the audio is, is totally up to you, whatever your budget is. Um, when I started my show, we used very cheap um, microphones that got bought from China. They are very terrible, but it worked for the few, first 20 episodes. I put more money into it, you know, upgraded to some uh, quarter inch mics, bought a mixer that goes out to a dig um, digital recorder. It's um, it sounds complicated now, but believe me, it when you start looking at it and you start piecing it together, you can get what works. A lot of times, people use USB mics, a USB mic because you can plug it right right in, and then it can pick up the room pretty good. But you'll want to monitor all the extra sound that's going around you. Um, you might need a computer. You can if you use the microphone that's built in, understand that the quality may not be as good as a, as a regular microphone, and you'll need your computer to have some editing software. Um, the biggest two are Audacity and GarageBand. I use a Mac at home, and I still prefer Audacity. It's a free program. They have it available on most operating systems. Um, it's really a powerful and a free tool, and you would be surprised of, I mean, I think it's the vast majority of people still will, will use Audacity over something that's built for, for a Mac like Rajman. Even though you can totally use it and it works and they're kind of similar, something free that, that good is Audacity, probably the best freeware out, I've, I've ever come across.
Um, now you will need space to, 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 to create a podcast. Now, physical space, you need a quiet place to record. So for instance, today, you know, when you're in your library, every office is different. I have, I'm in a shared office, but I had to find, I had to go to my supervisor's office, close the door, turn off the phone, make it quiet. So you don't hear everyone walking by, um, spring break now. So there's kids running around the place. It's, it's a noisy place for a library. You also need digital space. There has to be some place online that your podcast will be hosted. Um, that is for you to decide. You can, if you use something like YouTube, that's free. If you want to use something like SoundCloud, it's free to a point where then if you want to put it on a certain amount of audio, you have to, you'll have to pay. You, you can put it on your own library servers um, and, and, and allow it there and, and allow people to come to listen to it there. That is totally up to you and what you want to do and what your budget looks like and how big or how small you want your podcast to be. Like I, that's just totally up to you, but those are your options. And the, the final thing you need to create a podcast is advertisement. Because there, you know, if you don't tell people about your podcast, you're recording just to record it. And that's not a terrible thing to have a digital copy of an author event or, you know, spoken word um, things like that, that uh, programs that you would have at your library, but it's also important to get it out there because you might be able to change someone's life. You might be able to, to, to change a, a, a library's program. Maybe somebody else might hear it and get, a, you know, glean an idea from you and create something as good as what you're doing or something or improve upon it and make it better. And these are some of the ways that you can get it out there. It, I'm sure every library is using most, if not all of these already, and it's not much just to add an extra link to a website, tweet out, put a, another post on social media, or, or include another line or two on a newsletter or flyer. Uh, for further reading, you can check out some of these links, um, or if you want to, feel free to email me. Any questions? your PowerPoint PDA that we're sending out this month. Um, that would be a great resource to have. Do we have any questions from anyone? David, I did have something. Um, in regards to UMedia, what kind of programming have you done with the UMedia group? I am not in um, located at that South Dade Regional Library. Um, so I am only usually going there with, if they're going to have a, a special program and they invite me or if they're reaching out and they need support um, help there. But they have, I believe, I don't know, I can't see if Monty's here or not. I don't see that he's here, no. Um, he would be the one, he does their, I think it's a weekly podcast or a monthly podcast on the teens. and since they're a regional library, they're a lot bigger they, than, than my current library, but they have a larger auditorium. So they do uh, a lot of author events there. Okay. And um, depending on the turnout and, and the, the time restrictions of the author, sometimes they'll just record an event or they will um, do a, might have time for an interview. Um, my library is just a regular branch. It's, you know, we're located pretty far south in Dade County. So we don't get much, much of that kind of big traffic down here. Um, they also, because it's a U media is Miami is a makerspace, our, our makerspace. They have, um, they do a lot of stuff on YouTube because it's free and it doesn't cost anything. And so they, the, um, the teens themselves will put up um, podcasts if they want and any type of uh, um, creations that they that they make there in, the, in their lab. Yes, and I know on this um, this month's interactive PDF, I do have a media po podcast that they just did on gun control, kind of in relation to the current uh, things that have happened. Um, yes, 
I will definitely, um, Willany and Dawn have asked for a copy of the PowerPoint, and I will definitely get that out. If I can't get it on the interactive PDF, I will send it out um, as a separate file. Um, Patrick, uh, what would be the startup cost for those that do not have? Um, I ha he has computers and microphones that do not have. I think what Patrick is saying, what would the startup co cost for those that do not have computers and microphones? So I guess that. Okay. Um, so if you're looking to do one at your current library, <clears throat> I am, I'm going to assume that you do have a computer. Um, then what I would recommend is, I don't know if you can install the programs yourself how, or how restrictive your IT department is. If you, if you can install programs yourself, if they have to install it, I would first start out with Audacity. It's freeware. It's, there's no bugs in it. I mean, it works. It's a solid, solidly built program. Um, install that into onto a computer that you can move or where you're going to be able, if you have a tablet or a, a, a laptop um, where you can record, where you can take that, that, that computer and record in an auditorium, a break room, an, a, a private office, somewhere where there, you can restrict the, the, the background uh, noise. Um, after that, all you need is a microphone and I, my recommendation is look on Amazon, see what's on sale. Any of those type of, um, if you're going to use a laptop, you probably would need a three and a half millimeter jack, which is like what you would, you know, you can put in most phones until Apple took them out of theirs or a USB mic. Um, the other thing is to look at um, if you really want to, if you're on a budget, check out Craigslist. Sometimes People give them for free. Sometimes they'll be really cheap. Or check out your local guitar center because they have sales there all the time. Usually a holiday comes up and there's whatever holiday sale, and you you can get a mic really cheap. Um, once you get that, then you can say, well, do I want a mic stand? Do I want a a, a wind protector, or windscreen for your mic? That's all added on optional. Like I said, you can make this as big or small as you want. Um, if you get just buy the one mic, which could be about 20 bucks, once you plug that into your computer, oh, it get smaller. Um, once you get the the sound um, recording onto your laptop, you can record directly to your hard drive. You can um, use that and you can use the audio, the audacity, uh, audio editing to reduce the background noise. And I mean, I can't, I don't know how to, how to say it, but there, I mean, it's step-by-step -step YouTube instructions on how to do that because I wasn't born knowing this. I, I started out and just played around with it and found what worked, checked out other, what, you know, talked to other people and found out that they were doing exactly the same thing. It's Sorry, David. Did find um, the step-by-step -step instructions on YouTube for setting up Audacity. Yeah, yeah, for on how to on how to um, reduce background noise, on how to edit the files. It, I mean, it's step-by-step -step instructions, and there are YouTube videos uh, on that. Okay, um, Patrick did say that he has um, a few Yeti microphones. Um, yeah, that's perfect. Do you kind of set up in a group consistently? Like what? Um, what podcast are you doing at your library on a um, consistent basis? At my particular library, we don't we don't won't record uh, podcasts here, just because my my community is hasn't my teens haven't shown that that's something that they're interested in, okay. and we don't have author events here, so that's not something that that you know it's just the reason that we don't we don't um, we don't have that kind of turnout at my at my location. But if you're going to record an author event, I mean, there are, it's, you know, it's like working with, with a Windows computer. You can close, you can close a program three, four different ways. There's no right or wrong way on how to do something. You can, if you, you know, you have a little, those little um, digital recorders and you can just put that on a podium and just let the person talk and the sound from there will, will pick it up and you you can edit the software to an extent. You can edit that sound 
in Audacity to an extent and make it sound pretty good. Um, you can you can work. I mean, it's just the, there are so many options for you to get to that point. Um, if you're going to record lots of people, you need a, a pretty decent mic then um, that can, that you can put on a table that's open that everyone can 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 kind of have an equal access to. Um, when I record my own personal podcast, everyone has their own mic. I think I picked those up. Maybe they were on sale on Amazon. They might have been like about fifteen dollars each. And as time has grown on, we've purchased more and more. And I think the most we've had at any at any given time was eight or nine people talking at once, which sounds crazy. But you can kind of after you get a, a feel for it, you know how to work it, how to talk to people, how to you know get someone to stop talking, get somebody to talk more. And that's that's really just comes with 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 time and experience. Yes. All right, great. Uh, do we have any more questions? Okay, I don't see any. Um, you guys feel free to, um, I'm going to go over a couple of things, but feel free to um, ask any more questions. Um, and if anybody wants to email me any questions or, or talk more, please feel free to, to do that. Awesome. Um, David, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just a couple of things um, that I have put together um, for this month's interactive PDF. Um, I know that, you know, some of the, it's really important, you know, that we all know and I think keep in mind that that we're, a lot of us are starting this from scratch. So it really helps, you know, to get the input from everybody on what can be helpful. One of the things that, um, that I have started to do is put together a LibGuide for the digital use discussion group. And that's really at the very beginning phases. And I'm really interested in anybody that is interested in helping put that together. But I'm also really interested on knowing what you would like to be included in that. Um, so it, feel free to add that in the questions panel and um, you can add either things that you would like included or also if you're willing to help with um, the LibGuide. Okay, um, Karen wanted to ask if, um, Dave, are you still there? David? Yes, I'm still here. Um, Karen Garcia wanted to ask if uh, doing the podcast has had an impact on library usage. I think it has. It. I've. One thing you'll you'll see if you start um, listening to podcasts or you start searching for podcasts is that there are lots of them. If you, for instance, if you go to to um, Apple Podcasts, which you get you can get through iTunes, um, you can see that podcasts have only increased and if you'll see I'm trying to think how to best put this I'm quite jealous of how of uh, the Free Library of Philadelphia and, and New York Public Library of a lot of their author events I know that's something I'm going to try and push in my library system because we are a large library system we do have events and I and I wish we would do more with that. And you can reach out to do more. And if you, the more you do, the more you know, the more active you are, the more content you're putting out, the more it, it improves your library. And not as far as um, library speaking, as my own um, personal. Uh, podcast as we're trying to um, build a brand in in South Florida, the more we we do, the more we're asking. You know, the more uh, traffic we're seeing, the more engagements we're seeing, the more you know it's growing out that way. So funding is always a hard issue for 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 libraries, and if we're putting out stuff and making our, ourselves as uh, authority figures. It's hard to take away from that. Um, Karen's saying that it's not the same to have the numbers that are through the internet than in person. Yes. Yeah. Let me 
make sense. Okay, awesome, awesome question. Okay, um, so a couple different resources, uh, partnerships I found on the UMedia COP partnerships. There's some great uh, links to um, some information about building um, different partnerships. Um, Social Justice Guidebook, this is a nice kind of a curriculum based and then a job description for like a UMedia type position in UMedia Hartford. Um, then I have here um, a link to some podcasts that are from UMedia, directly from the UMedia COP. And then here's a link to a podcast on gun control that is from UMedia Miami. So that's pretty interesting um, to look at. And then a, um, here is uh, Rebecca from Nashville, Renee from Springfield, and Eric from Chicago are all having a conversation about curriculum and development. That's um, UMedia's community of practice. So those are some of the um, mentors, leaders talking about curriculum and curriculum development. Then I found a couple on lynda.com, a nice um, kind of lesson on GarageBand podcasting and um, producing pr professional podcasts. Now you do have to have a Lynda account. I know some of um, my, library people um, do have the lynda.com account so those are some nice um, links to um, a, some professional development on podcasting and then um, you also competency webinar um, in march the topic was um, teen growth and development so this link is um, a link to that video presentation okay i think i see couple more. Yes, I'm going to send out the link to the interactive PDF because I'm going to this time put um, David's uh, recording as part of the interactive PDF. So you have that on um, the interactive PDF as well. So that will go out. So no, Donna, I haven't uh, sent this out yet. I was kind of trying to make it a little bit more effective. And again, um, you know, the whole idea of, you know, letting me know what's what's going to be helpful um, for you guys to, you know, um, and I'm trying to collect some more information that's um, beneficial to just help um, in your li individual library. So please feel free to let me know anything that would be helpful. And it may take some time to put some of this together, but hopefully, you know, I can keep that going on. And then with that LibGuide, um, that's something that, you know, will be available at all times as we start to put that together. So, any other questions about anything? Let's see. And we're going to add some more. Pod, I'm trying to get the podcast from North Palm Beach Library linked in here. So, we'll have a couple. Um, we'll put David's recording here. And then another webinar that I did um, this month was the design thinking for libraries, which is something that really I've been, have started with this group and have been following. And um, it's another resource that is available. Um, and if you're interested in seeing any of those uh, podcasts, um, please feel free to ask me uh, for the information. But there is some more resources for libraries on the design um, thinking link here as well. Okay, let's see. So, any other questions before we um, finish up, or maybe some suggestions on what you might like to hear um, next month? I was talking to um, I, uh, Montgomery from, and I, he has a couple people on um, doing some music and some uh, visual editing. So I was looking into that and I'm also talking with Hartford Public Library on um, and really looking at curriculum and more specifically. So she's looking, trying to put together her schedule to see when she's going to be able to meet with us. And it's looking, she's looking kind of at May. It may even be a little bit longer, but she's going to meet with us and um, give us some more specifics about curriculum. 
and some more U Media programming. She's got a program that she's been there for I think three and a half to four years, four and a half years in U Media um, Hartford. So, um, any other questions? David, I thank you so much for being with us and taking thank the you. time You're to welcome. put that together. Really good. I really appreciate it. And uh, if anybody's interested in <laughs> you know, starting a monthly podcast, or you know, I think it would be interesting to see, you know, what uh, everybody is thinking about and um, looking at maybe some starting some new programming in your libraries. So, if there are, if there's no other questions, we can wrap it up. Yeah, I want to thank you all for your time. Thank you, Erica. Thanks, guys. You guys have a great week and enjoy the, the nice weather. Thanks again, David. All right, my pleasure. Thank you, everybody.